Chuck? Yeah. Today, I want to talk to you about size. Who been talking to you? Let me finish the sentence. Size and life. Oh, okay, good. Because, <laughs> you know, I'm just saying. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like it's a little embarrassing down there. <laughs> I think there's much more conversation that could be had on that subject in this world. Really? Because physics matters in it, but typically when people talk about life, they only think of biology. Of course. Or at most, chemistry and biology. Okay. I like the chemistry. Physics is the substrate of it all. You would say that, no, though. Stop. <laughs> let's I'm, be honest. I'm just telling you. Yeah. Okay? So let's start with some basic facts. Okay. All right? When you're growing up, especially if you were a boy, they say, how strong are you? They would challenge you to this. And, 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 and you would like show them your muscle. Yeah. Let me see the, the gun show, baby. <laughs> let me see the bicep. Welcome to the gun show. Okay. Yeah. What they're measuring is the area, the cross-sectional area of your muscle. So the bigger the muscle, the stronger, the stronger it is. Unless you are Bruce Lee. Little skinny Asian dude <laughs> gonna whip your natural A double scribble. <laughs> so you need to know, however, yeah, that as your muscles get bigger, they become heavier. It becomes heavier according to the volume of the muscle. But the strength increases only as the cross-section of the muscle. I don't understand what you're saying. Think about very heavy animals have very thick limbs. You need thick limbs to hold up that much weight. Weight, right. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Got that? All yeah. right. As you get smaller and smaller, mm -hmm. you don't need thick limbs. How thick is an insect leg? Yeah, not thick. Not. Right. It's not. The ant picks up something that weighs as much as it does. Right. And when walks around walks with around it. Walks around with it. The smaller you are, the even less you weigh for how small you are. Because weight scales as your volume. Weight scales as your radius cubed, but your strength scales as radius squared, which is basically your cross section. This difference means as the animal gets larger, its weight outstrips the ability of its strength to hold up its body. So it needs really, really fat legs to compensate. Gotcha. As you get smaller, the weight starts going away fast because now the radius is getting smaller and smaller and then the area basically wins because now your, your, your volume gets smaller faster than the cross-sectional area gets. So try this, right? If your radius is two, then your volume goes as radius cubed. So what is two times two times two? So you get eight. what? Eight, okay. Now if your radius is a half. Oh, it's going down. It's going down. <laughs> <laughs> What's a half times a half times a half? half? Right. That's an eighth. Right. Okay? So you get this crossover point in the animal kingdom. That's how the smaller the creature, the bigger is the weight it can carry. That's why Relative to its own body weight. That's amazing. And the higher it can jump. Right. Because the its body mass isn't much relative to what the legs are. Which is the creepiest thing in the world when you see a kangaroo mouse. Oh. Jump. It's a tiny little mouth, uh -huh. and it can jump like <laughs> six feet. <laughs> I'm like, no. Or flee, which is, you know, barely yeah, the size barely of Barely visible. And then they count how high above its height right. it can jump. Right. And it's, what, 10 times its height or something? What, 20, 30? Yeah. Whatever is that number. Right. But you ain't jumping that high above your height. Never. And neither is any other large macroscopic object. The laws of physics are dictating what your acrobatic skills will be depending on your size. That's pretty wild. It's no accident that there are no six foot five gymnasts. Think about it. There was one. The smaller one. gym. <laughs> there was one. There was once one. That <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> and that was the end of it. So it's not an accident of physiology, it's the physics of physiology. Right. That when you are smaller, you in general will be stronger relative to your body weight. That's true. On top of that, there's more going on. If you walk towards the wall, can you then just crawl up the wall? 
No. No. You weigh too much. Right. However sticky your fingertips are. No. Even if you just had a candy cane, right. that's not going to get you up the wall. A spider can just walk to the wall and walk straight up the wall. Ants can walk straight up the wall. And what about Spider-Man? Okay. Are you saying that it's like the laws of physics, he's violating the laws of physics by being able to walk up the wall? Badly, because at his size- Right, he should just the, lose his fingers. The, the stickiness is insufficient to hold his just, his his weight right. against the wall. You can't just scale things up and make them all do the same things. Damn. That's why there are no human-sized spiders, okay? Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> because you know what would happen? It breaks its legs. That big juicy middle part of the spider, mm. it would weigh too much compared to the thickness of the legs. If a flea were our size and in the Olympics, it, it could would jump, uh, right, yeah. It, it no, jump. it would break its it, legs. Right, it would just fall under its own weight. Under its own weight. And lay there and scream for help. Now, I knew this when I first saw the movie, one of these 1950s B movies, Them. They're these huge ants. And they're just ants, but they're like the size of the, buildings. Right, and that cannot happen. That cannot happen. Oh, no. The laws of physics will you not have to allow ask, How much would an ant of those proportions weigh at that size and would break its own legs? What they noticed, they got, they met us halfway there because they all of physics wasn't yet invading biology. Okay. So they realized that the legs would be sensitive to damage. Uh, so that's so what rather they did? than shooting at the main body of the go ant. Go for the legs. They said go for the legs. That's funny. And he shoot out the leg. Right. And then it started falling down on its own. And they shot the antenna. So that's how they ended up defeating them. But wait, there's more. Not only that, there are two other things that don't scale together. You have a glass and you pour water into it. Okay. And the water takes the shape of the glass. Absolutely. Okay. If you're waxing your car and then you hose it down, what does the water do on the surface of the car? It beads up and rolls off. It, it beads up. Not always rolling off, depending on the Depends slope. Depends on the slope. Okay. It beads up. Right. Well, if it beat it up, it didn't need a receptacle. So why do you need a receptacle when you drink water? Because it will just come out of me. Yeah. <laughs> It'll, it, 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 it can't occupy that much volume without right. spilling onto the ground. Right. So what's going on? There's a force called surface tension on liquids, where all the molecules in the liquids, there's a force field among them, mm. okay? They're called the Van der Waals for forces, and they all move among each other, but at the surface, there are no Van der Waals forces above it, because oh. there's no liquid there. Right. So the net effect of all these forces is to create a slightly more concentrated film of molecules at the surface. So it becomes like a net? L like a, like a, a membrane. A membrane. A membrane. Okay. Oh, I like that. That's why you can toss a leaf onto the water and it doesn't just sink. Right there, it'll just sit it's, on top. It sit on top of right. the membrane. Nice. Okay. Also, if you fill a vessel very slowly and very carefully, even a glass of water, you you will see a convex curve on the surface of the water. Really? Yes. Okay. As you come up to oh, the top. You know what? That has definitely been done. Uh, when you get to the top of the glass, if you overfill it, there's a quick little point where the it's, water is sitting above the just lip. Just above the lip, that little bit. That's, but it doesn't spill over the side. That's surface tension. That's amazing, and I love it. That's surface tension. Okay, yes. so that surface tension is not enough to ball up this much water, but it is strong enough to ball up that I much water. Gotcha. Okay, because above a certain blob of water, the weight of the water becomes greater than the surface tension and it can't hold it out. Oh my God, it's like a giant ant at that point. Okay, so those two forces cross in their capacity to influence what the water is doing. Interesting. Okay, so in the film, A Bug's Life, if you watch any Pixar movie, you know there's a room of scientists informing their films. That's where our science is. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Pixar movie. So there's a scene where the ant goes to the bar. He sees a mosquito at the bar, and the mosquito orders a drink. So what does the mosquito order? Blood. No, it's a real bar. Okay, Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary, thank okay. you. <laughs> Dude, it's okay. a real bar. It's a real bar. Okay, all right. All right. So, Sorry I didn't suspend enough disbelief 
taste for the <laughs> bug bar in Bug's life. <laughs> so, <laughs> the mosquito orders a Bloody Mary. O positive. So the bartender says, coming right up, and a blob of Bloody Mary comes out. And then the mosquito sticks a proboscis in it, sucks it out, and then he's high and he falls down. Didn't need a glass. Because he's small enough for surface tension to completely contain the liquid. That's, you know, I gotta tell you something. This is why people love you as an educator. Because you take a bug's life and turn it into a physics lesson <laughs> on surface tension. You gotta see beyond the. So it's evidence that the world occupied by insects and the forces that matter within it are different. Than our world. Than our world. That's great. Because the balance of forces changes yeah. depending on how big or small you are. Okay. And so to an insect, a drop of water is fully contained. It right. can drink from it. It doesn't need it. It doesn't, it doesn't need, need a, glass. a glass. Right. So gravity is less important to insects than there other is. sort of forces of nature that operate. But let's keep going. Okay. Okay. What's the smallest life you could possibly have? Well, we have the viruses, viruses. and people like arguing about whether it's really alive. But they seem alive to me. But is a molecule alive? I mean, once you're down there, then quantum physics matters. Right. Okay. Quantum physics. We don't we don't experience the phenomena of quantum physics as big macroscopic objects. Frankly, neither do insects. Right. But if they're too big. There's a size below which the quantum world would be everything you ever knew or cared about. But we don't have life that small because life has certain complexity that requires some minimum number of molecules in order to declare it life. We have a whole Star Talk episode where there's a physicist turned astrobiologist who is thinking about how to quantify the molecular identity of a life form and asking what is the smallest value it can have and still be considered life. Life. Right. right. So below that, we think we're not going to find life. That's that's why. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's why when we discovered the solar system and or planets orbit the sun, and then we probe the atom. Oh, oh my gosh! There's it's electron. a little mini solar it's system. A little, it's a little mini solar system. Right. So so could it be this all the way down? Right. In fact, the space occupied by electrons in orbit around their atoms uses a word derived from our word orbit. They're called orbit orbitals. Right. Okay, because they're not they're not in clean yeah. things. They're like in probability of clouds, okay, where they can occupy any space within there. Right. So it's, it's different, but we so wanted it to be the same. Right. Just philosophically. Yes. But it's not. Right. All the rules are different. Quantum physics overrides Einstein gravity, Newtonian gravity, everything. Do you remember that scene in Men in Black where they had to find the galaxy on the belt of Orion? Then you find out there's a cat called... Orion. Orion. And it's got a collar. It's got a collar with a pendant, and in the pendant is a galaxy. We know because the laws of physics don't scale... Right. ...relative to other laws of physics... But that's not going to be. You, that's, you're not going to get a galaxy inside of a marble right. sitting on the necklace of a, of a cat, cat any more than you can have an ant the size of a house crawling out of a cave. Right. The forces don't allow that. Nor do they allow you to be too large. Okay. So could there be life the size of a galaxy? If you're the size of a galaxy, let's say our galaxy, which is 100,000 light years across. Right. All right? And there you are, and your limbs and everything occupy this volume. And now your head itches. How long will it take you to scratch your head? Um, the signal has to get to the thing that's going to do the scratching. So even at the speed of light, if your arm is halfway across the galaxy, right. that is uh, what's uh, 50,000 50, years, years just to get the thought down there. Right. And, and then, then another the 50,000 50, years to pull it up here. To, and scratch. Right. And so, okay, maybe large life forms never itch. Okay. <laughs> but there you go. still, what we know of life is that it does a lot of, evolution does a lot of experimenting. 
And so it needs to see, oh, this doesn't work, let's try this. That works better. Oh, here's something that works even better. Oh, this, this is bad, we can't help this, you go extinct, all right? There are these experiments that have to happen on a time scale within the age of the universe. Mm -hmm. If every new thing that you're gonna try as life takes hundreds of thousands of years just to experiment on, how are you gonna have the biodiversity that we think of as a natural feature of what life is and puts forth? So, above a certain size, we don't see that as realistic or reasonable. Lessons in size and life. That's nice. It's a fascinating field that brings together physicists and biologists. Yeah. And uh, when I was a kid, I had a book called Kinesiology. 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 Oh, the study of movement. And, yeah, movement and, and basically the physics right. of your physiology. Oh, yeah, muscles. Oh, I loved it. I said, if I'm not going to be an astrophysicist, you're going to be a kinesiologist. What? Just the physics of of human everything about you. Oh my God, could you imagine Neil deGrasse Tyson, gym teacher? <laughs> Stop! <laughs> Don't be making, I'm gonna be a good gym teacher, I think. <laughs> so that, that's all I got for you. This is good On stuff. Size and life, once again, a Star Talk explainer. Thanks for being a part of that, Chuck. Always a pleasure. All right, Neil deGrasse Tyson, as always, bidding you to keep looking up.